welcome to Our Voices. I'm Palestine Iman, your guest host for this week. I'm also VOA Somali anchor and reporter. My co-hosts for today are Ariana Itangishaka and Semenish Yakoye. Ladies, we have a very special topic this week. African women in the diaspora are participating in the U.S. midterm election. Why this topic is so important mm. to our audience? Palestine, I think it's definitely important for our audience on the continent because we are examining how the political landscape looks like, not just for the primary, but also for the uh, 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 presidential elections coming up in a few years. So I think um, I'm excited about looking at what it looks like, uh, especially the involvement of the diaspora women um, from the diaspora. Yeah, that's true. I was researching this topic and according to Migration Policy Institute, there are actually 2.1 million sub-Saharan African immigrants in the United States. And that's, I think, a very big number. And that, that number <coughs> needs representation, needs to be heard, because any law and policy affects them, right? That's right. Yeah, and mostly they say the minority communities don't vote and don't practice that right as it's supposed to be. So seeing the bylaw paper is someone like you mm -hmm. will That's give them even the sense of inclusiveness. So that will be um, very helpful too. Mm -hmm. On November 8th, tens of millions of U.S. voters will cast their ballots in the midterm elections. All 435 seats in the House of Representatives are up for grabs and 35 of the 100 seats in the Senate. 39 state and territorial elections are being contested, as well as numerous other state and local elections. American women of African descent have a big stake in this year's poll. Many believe that holding a public office gives them the best opportunity to help their U.S. African communities. We had the pleasure of talking to two of them. Hodan Hassan is a woman of the African heritage running for Minnesota House seat. She's currently serving her second term in a district 62B. Hassan is hoping to win yet another term, but says her job is not easy. Well, one of the reasons why I took this decision, and I still continue to run, even though this is a really difficult job, it's a job that never stops. It's a job that you do 24 hours. Sometimes we will sit on the house floor debating on an issue 24 hours. Like the sun will come up, the sun will go down, and the sun will come up. You're still on the house floor working. You won't see your family or sometimes even talk to them. Um, it's because I, I saw the need for not only my voice, but voices like mine. Many young candidates of African descent are also running for the first time. Zainab Muhammad is running for Minnesota State Senate. If she wins, she will be the first black woman and the youngest on the floor. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, disparities that comes with being a woman already. You know, you're, whether you are white, black, or Asian, if you are a woman, you're already looked upon as if you shouldn't be leading. And so put that on top of being an immigrant, on top of being a woman, on top of being a Muslim, on top of being a hijabi woman, on top of being a young woman, um, it is really difficult. Hassan and Mohammed have a similar backgrounds and both say being a female and African makes it difficult to run for a local or a state seat. To be, um, you know, very frank, um, politics in America is still a male-dominated space. Um, it is really misogynist, sexist, um, racist space that um, there isn't a whole lot of women presence. Um, our house, uh, between the House and the Senate, we have 201 legislators and um, less than a third of that is women. And the year that I was elected, was supposedly considered the year of women. We only have 75 women in the House and the Senate combined. Muhammad is just 25 years old, but she has a big ambition beginning with Minnesota State Senate seat. One of the most prominent things about my race is the fact that I am young um, and it comes up often. Yes, I'm 25 years old, but I've had more life experience and lived experience than most of the 50, 60, 70 year old people that have been holding the seats for 20 years and the policies that they have implemented, that they have created, I have seen how they can be detrimental and wrong and how they can be hopeful and helpful. 
And so because I've had to experience it, I want to make sure that I'm creating ones that are systematically correct. Embracing the challenge on her path to a public office, Mohammed is optimistic about winning Minnesota Senate seat. It means that we've never had somebody who understands what it means to be a young person, what it means to be a Muslim woman, what it means to be a black woman. Black women's experience is shaping our policies, and so it's really important that we do elect people like myself and other women who look like me. According to Bureau Research Center, more than half of African immigrants arrived in the U.S. after 2000. Politicians of African descent are presently feasible and advancing. Palestinian Iman, BOA News, Washington. Thank you so much, Palestine, for that report. Uh, what is the perspective of African um, women in the U.S. Uh, in participating in the uh, American election? How important is it for them to participate in this process? Mm -hmm. And joining us in a minute, um, uh, hopefully in a minute, we'll be joined by Wala Blage, uh, an American librarian and I, of uh, Nigerian descent as well. Uh, she's also a professor at the American University. Um, she's also a civil advocate. Um, and uh, workers for workers' right and legal counsel. Uh, she'll be joining us in a minute from um, here in Maryland, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And when we're looking at uh, this political landscape, I know earlier, Seminga, she had asked uh, how important is it for women of color to participate in the American election. I think that um, mostly, as you had talked about earlier, um, young women need to see themselves in the political landscape. Yeah, yeah. Young women need to see uh, someone who looks like them in the political uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. um, I think not only that, I think that also mm -hmm. um, some organizations, some research has found that their, their numbers are vast and that they can actually swing states um, if they were to show up at the political polls to vote. So I think that it is key that they take part in the political uh, system here in the U.S. Yeah, there is the two points mm -hmm. that the two um, women we interviewed and the young girl um, comment, made, made, which is like mm -hmm. the male dominancy space mm -hmm. in the politics and the age too. The age. So now the t tradition of the politics in the United States even is changing. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people are joining the po in politics. Mm -hmm. Then more color people are running. Women are, on, you know running too so that looks like there's a change and always change has a pain mm -hmm. and, 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 and someone should be a champion so mm -hmm. I think if they are champions for mm -hmm. this change and that will change mm -hmm. the way we see the politics for the young people they believe they are the best mm -hmm. because there's a lot of young people and there are many young people who have a vote too mm -hmm. so I think something is changing now yeah, yeah I mean I, I, it's true Palestine what you said I mean despite the challenge they might have mm -hmm. it's really encouraging to see African uh, uh, women immigrants running for uh, yeah. offices here in the US because I mean uh, most of them are here um, immigrating as refugees, maybe, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So um, any policy that uh, related to immigration really affects them. Mm -hmm. And so they need to be heard and they need to have a say. And mm -hmm. also economy. A lot of African immigrants have 2.1 million is a, a very big number. They mm -hmm. are in the workforce. They contribute highly to the economy. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they, they need equal pay. They need equal benefit. And in order to secure that, they need to have a representation. They need to be racial um, equality. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's definitely a need for trailblazers. Yeah, and they don't have the luxury of running office like they are startups, mm -hmm. like, you know, the politics, some people, they come as a name, a family name or husband name or wife name or something like that. Mm -hmm. But these women and these immigrants are startups. They start mm -hmm. now. Imagine coming from this country in a young age or in teen age or being even the first generation of immigrant and running an office. It's not an easy job. The right. question, what, what is, yeah, that's yes. the question. What yeah. are the challenges? And, and right. they know the real challenges, which right. is the finding good schools, right. like um, uh, finding health care. The challenges care. are definitely you know, many, it, yeah. I mean, including the accents as well, because yeah. you come from another country. There's a <laughs> whole lot of things you have to overcome. But as we have said earlier, what is the perspective of African women in the diaspora running for office in America? And how important is the... Uh, to participate in the election process. We would uh, ask uh, Wala Blage. Uh, she is um, 
I'm, I'm sorry, we're actually going to go to Nakita Ricks, uh, Nakita Ricks, um, who is going to help us uh, further this conversation. Nakita, thank you so much for being with Our Voices. You have been featured uh, on VOA, um, and we profiled you, and one of the things that you had mentioned was that you had um, achieved the American dream. How hard was it to see yourself as a Liberian woman achieving the American dream in the political realm? Well, good morning, and thank you uh, for inviting me this morning. Um, yes, uh, as far as achieving the American dream, um, running for politics, you know, I didn't start out um, thinking of myself as a politician, and mm -hmm. I got to run for office because I was approached by Emerge, who teaches um, women how to run for office. It was a very difficult process. I ran s seven years before I got elected. Wow. My first run was in 2014, and I ran and I got over 100,000 votes, but that was not enough. Um, I did not win that year. I came back in 2017, and I ran for city council. At that time, I came in third in that uh, competition. So seemingly, it seemed like, well, maybe politics wasn't for me, and mm -hmm. people would say, you know, you're really a nice person, uh, but maybe you know, there's a lot of ways you can impact your community. But then in 2016, I got inspired after, you know, the government changed hands and I started to hear all the negative rhetoric about immigrants and that immigrants were from S-hole countries, immigrants were criminals. And I decided that, you know, we needed more people who could carry the story of what immigrants bring to this, uh, to America. Uh, we're a big part of the workforce. One in six people in the Denver metro area uh, here are immigrants, entrepreneurs. And we do the jobs that people don't want to do, you know, whether that's in nursing homes or restaurants. We're also doctors and lawyers and uh, engineers. So we bring so much to the country and um, it was great to have voices. I want to see people who carry my live experience in our state capital and there wasn't anyone. And so um, in 2020, we busted the door and I became the first African immigrant to be elected in Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it's very encouraging to see you overcoming all these challenges, never giving up and finally um, end up in office. So as someone who went through this process, how does uh, diversity play out in U.S. elections? What are some of the challenges you encountered that made you uh, doubt or the opportunities that help you uh, achieve your dream? Well, you know, politics is all about money and influence. So when I ran, I had a really tough race. I was able to raise about 15000 but my, uh, my Democratic um, opponent, um, was able to raise over 160000 There was a lot of money put in there for him. So I had to overcome money, had to overcome the fact that I had ran twice already and people thought, uh, you know, she's not going to win. So mm -hmm. she's always running mm -hmm. and, and a bunch of negative ads. But it is challenging. I mean, you're coming with your accent, you're coming, uh, and you haven't done this before, right? There's not a lot of us. So people are like, not sure, oh, what is she going to do when she gets into office? Mm -hmm. All of those things. And I think people are uh, concerned about the unknown. But, you know, in the last two years, I've been able to demonstrate that I care about my community. I've been able to bring some really great legislation to impact the lives of people in Colorado. And so um, I was even you know, uh, awarded legislator of the year for um, my my county. So I'm excited to uh, be running again for a second term. And by God's grace, I will be elected, you know, November 8th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's really interesting, Nikita. I mean, it's time for a quick break, but we want you to stay with us as you tell us more tips on um, how to be part of this legislative system here in the U.S. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive deep more into this conversation. We'll be right back. Health. Wellness, sport, beauty, medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. What are the main health concerns in Africa and around the world? Find out the latest on coronavirus. Connect with our experts and ask them questions. How long does the virus stay? Join me, Lino Khmudu, in Washington every week on Healthy Living. Right here on VOA. Welcome back. You are watching Our Voices. 
This week, we are discussing the participation and representation of African female politicians in the United States diaspora. We just heard from politicians. Now, let's see what the voters in African immigrants' communities have to say. I honestly believe we need to see more women representation in the community, in all communities, especially African women. Um, it's critical to see different uh, perspectives and different um, leadership. Um, it's also very important to see our women leading the most important and critical issues in our community. Um, I think women have a very big position in our community. Um, we are mothers, we are very intimate to our community's needs, and I believe we are the closest to be the advocate for our community and be in positions um, of leadership that could represent our community and can speak with the voice of community to you know, advocate and, and build a system that supports our, all of our communities. I, first of all, I think it's a privilege to run for office. Uh, this country has a history where uh, people of color, black people, couldn't vote for a long time, and they fought for that, uh, for that right. People gave their lives to have the right to vote. So it's not only important for women to vote, but it's also important for them to run for office because people gave their lives for this privilege and for, for us who came here for the American dream not to take advantage of that, I think it's a disservice to why we came here for the first place. We came here for better lives. We came here for freedom. We came here for safety. We came here for, um, you know, for financial development. So being involved in the politics where the law uh, is made, where the um, you know, uh, decisions are made that is going to affect every day, every day your livelihood, it's very important to sit at the table where those decisions are being made. And women, African women who are running for office and who are uh, being a lawmakers, I, I couldn't think about what more um, that's really um, the perfect example of how to pursue your American dream. I personally believe that. We just heard from African immigrant uh, communities, and they all want to see um, an immigrant elected in office. Ms. Rex, um, we had a conversation recently with an Ethiopian immigrant uh, running in uh, Minnesota for Congress, and she said that the community is not ready for a woman Im immigrant to take office. So what was um, your experience like? What do you think about voters' participation? As far as voters' participation, since I ran so many times, I have been going out every election cycle, whether or not I'm running, to ensure that people are voting. And politics are local, right? A lot of times we get excited about people in the presidential races, but the school board races, the um, city council, the state representatives, those are the people who are impacting your life every day. They're making ordinances and laws that are gonna talk about your taxes, how much money is going to the public schools. It's gonna talk about healthcare and mental health and everything that impacts your daily lives. Mm -hmm. And so people need to participate more. I think more and more people are voting, more and more people are understanding that their vote is their voice and that it does count. Um, you know, a lot of uh, races are decided by just very few votes. So, mm -hmm. you know, you could win by like 10 votes mm -hmm. and it, it's legal, that, you know. so. It is important. I think more and more of of us need to take advantage of the right to vote because it is a hard fought right mm -hmm. that people have really, uh, tr uh, you know, died for in this country. So I think we're, we're, the light is coming on. More and more of us need to get involved mm -hmm. in voting and understanding that the people who are in office matter mm -hmm. and who governs does matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Rick. Uh you mentioned that, and most of the candidates also agree with you, that it's not easy for running an office. So how are you planning to help the young candidates or first-generation candidates? Are you doing any mentoring or to make their path easier? Yes. So, you know, um, as far as being an elected official, um, there are young people that come. I, I'm getting people to come into my office to be part of the office staff and team. It's great to be down at the Capitol because uh, you get to interact with other legislators. Um, you also get to weigh in on policies and bills and how they're passed, how they go through committee, how you do stakeholding. So all of those are opportunities that I'm offering to people within our community to come in. Also, if someone expresses that they do want to run for office, you know, we're there to help them mentor them, put them through different uh, leadership classes 
speeches or through uh, campaign uh, classes, learning how to do the stump speeches, how to raise money, you know, just how to run and how do you how to mm. present yourself. Mm. So there's yeah, we're there always to to help people. That's great, uh, Miss uh, Ricks. Um, you, we mentioned and you said it very well. You said politics is about finance and influence. What are some of the tips that you can give us? Um, my colleague Palestin has asked um, to help those that are coming up. What are some tips that you can give them in terms of securing some finances, securing some influence? Uh, whether it be in their community or even on the social media platform where a lot of young people are and immigrants are? So, you know, one of the things they, they teach us about running for office, the first thing you do is to make a list of everybody. Go all the way back to first grade, your teachers, your family members, and then you keep growing all your friends. And then when you make the announcement, it may not be hundreds of dollars, but, you know, five and ten dollars or twenty dollars can build a, a chest. And so you start there with the people that you you know, write down everything and ask them and tell them that you're running. You also can use social media, uh, ask people to donate five dollars. There's TikTok and Facebook, there's Instagram, there's ways that people are able to generate interest. You can um, get in there and talk to like, let's say you're 25 years old and you're just coming out of school or you're, you know, go to, you know, student organizations. Some A lot of time is also grassroots. Money is important, but also um, grassroots and influence, meaning that you have a network of people who support you. They may not be wealthy, but if they can help to push your message on, on, on the Internet or on social media, that also helps. You know, so it, it, it's both. Mm. Um, also, I mean, it's very encouraging to see people like you and also, you know, I had Omar in Minnesota uh, you, coming out, uh, running and getting office. Do you? communicate with each other? Do you have networks to support each other? Um, you know, I don't know Ilhar. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, very excited about her, of course, because I admire her and the fact that she's in Congress and all the things she's overcome. Um, we do have um, an elected official, for example, all those that are of Liberian descent. We have um, like a chat group and we support each other. There's many people in Minnesota that are elected there from uh, Liberia. And, and, and so, you know, we are supporting each other and building more of a network amongst ourselves mm -hmm. so yeah what about the Liberian community do you get support from there as well I mean they are your warm market I would say yeah I mean unfortunately we don't have a huge Liberian community here the Ethiopians are the biggest minority and you know I earlier you guys were talking about the um, new American majority and the increase of black immigrants so Colorado had a 400 percent increase according to the census from the year 2000 to 2019. So in the last 20 years, we've had a huge jump in African and Caribbean uh, immigrants. So it's time for us to be represented. And I'm thrilled. And in this next upcoming session in Colorado, we have an, a Haitian immigrant mm -hmm. that will be joining me in the House of mm -hmm. Representatives. So, so I'm very maybe, excited about that. Uh, do you have maybe a message for this large and growing number of African community, why it is important to run for office or to, uh, to vote on voting day? Yes. So, you know, like you said, there's over 2.1 million people of, immig of African immigrant descent here. It's very important that we participate in our elections. Wherever you are, you need to run. If you, you're interested in running, step out there and run. Um, it's important to have a voice. It's important for our um, messages to be heard. It's important for us to weigh in on the policies that will impact our children um, and impact the future of our communities. So you want to make your voices heard, first of all, by filling out that ballot and getting it in by November 8th. Get out there, support candidates, knock on doors, make phone calls for them. Support a candidate with $20. You know, for the price of a cup of coffee or weekly coffee, you can support people. But get involved in this democracy. It's important that our voices are heard and that we let people know that we're here. You're a taxpayer, so make sure that you have representation. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all the conversation. Thank you, Ms. Nikita Rick, for joining us. An American of Liberian descent who is running for a Prince Georgia Council seat of the U.S. State Maryland. We want to remind you, visit our social media platform and share some of the topics we would like uh, that we cover on our voices. 
We are on Facebook at VOA Africa, Instagram and Twitter at VOA Our Voices. We are also on WhatsApp and our number is country code plus one two zero two five zero three nine zero two five. When we return, we will introduce you to a. Um, we will show you a video of this uh, librarian politician we just talked to. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Our Voices. We are discussing about uh, po politics and uh, the influence of African women in the political landscape. Um, we also have um, Mrs. Wala Blage, an American Liberian Ni of Nigerian descent, and she's also a professor at the University of uh, at the American University. She's also an advocate for civil uh, women and workers' rights and the legal counsel. Uh, she is running here at the Prince George's County Council here in the state of Maryland. We just uh, talked. Hmm? <clears throat> we just talked to Liberian American uh, in our um, uh, in our program, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. she's also being featured as a woman to watch because I think she's doing some amazing work. Um, really running seven times and yeah, finally yeah. Um, winning a seat at the table, the decision making. And this year table. she's running too again. That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much um, uh, for our guests who uh, um, joined us on this uh, topic, very important topic. Uh, this is Our Voices. Thank you so much for being with us um, and all my colleagues here at Our Voices. And on behalf of VOA, that's it for us this week. We thank you and good day. <laughs>